the pebble, the wraps and luxurious. It is uh, brightly colored on the inside. And even the floors themselves aren't just a standard sheet metal. It actually has, it's this wonderful little polymer, this soft polymer plastic in a variety of colors that really softens the blow of your, of your feet. This underside here, I'm going to try to ping it as best I can. Whoop. The, these kind of little underside areas, you see those kind of slightly different colored. That's the actual cargo area of the ship. And upon that is loaded um, your power armor, uh, two all-terrain vehicles for Mar Mars' surface, and, of course, the cages themselves for these insectoid bugs. All right. Each and every single one of you gets your own individual room, as I mentioned before, uh, marked up to your specifications. In addition, there is a spacious recreational room, a, uh, a mess hall, and a kitchen. And there is also a hydroponics lab and a medical wing. Um, I would like... Patrick, I'd like you to roll me a D100, please. Before I say anything, can you guys hear me okay? Because apparently I turned into a robot there for a moment. There yeah. was... for, for a while there, you were a robot. I but was going to say we... something, but when I went to say something, you were already better. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, it, it was fading in and out, but we got so do you... the gist of it. Okay. Because I can repeat something if you need to. No, no. It, in, okay. in front of it was like um, like two seconds, like spurts where you'd just be like, eh, 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 and then you'd come back. <laughs> like, it was yeah. so quick. It's not even worth it, you know? <laughs> are covered with this nice polymer that's in different colors. And it really softens the blows on your feet. Right. That's exactly that happening. Uh, so okay. We, we yeah. can put together. Okay, so, so cards on the table that wasn't a glitch. I just had an aneurysm. <laughs> ah, I see. Okay. I'm well, fine now. Shit. I recovered really quickly. I'm good. I'm My, glad to hear that, Inferno. Yeah, I am. I have a very, very robust brain. Um, okay. You are. Patrick, with the 66 there, um, what is your... No, wait. Don't tell me. Okay. There's a reason why I had you roll with rather than me doing a skill check. I just gotta look something up real quick on your on your character sheet. Oh, look how talented you are. Okay. Patrick, yeah. as you go through the, the cargo section and you see everything outlined, the armors, uh, the, the power armor, the vehicles, and in particular the cages themselves. Well, first let me outline the cages and then I'm going to outline what you actually notice. Okay. So, the... So the Baron has supplied six large, they're 15 foot square, uh, reinforced crates that seem to be made of some sort of magnesium alloy. All right. There are small hatches allowing for both oxygen and food to be input into these cages without having any sort of exposure to what's inside. Right. Think of like small little slots that would slide out. You put in the food and, you know, it slides in. Right. There's no way your hands would ever go inside such of these cages. Right. OK. But Patrick, you notice something kind of different. Four of these cages look brand new, but two of those cages look older than the other ones. And in fact, a few scrapes at the bottom. A little bit of wear and tear here. You're pretty sure these things have been used before. And in fact, if you take a look on the inside, you can see what appears to be old repairs made to the interior of such things. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you are able to get yourselves settled. Now, as far as pilots go, both Tom and Alicia uh, have more than enough skill to actually pilot the Rhapsody herself. One other feature that the Rhapsody has, I will in, in probably for next week, I'll give like a nice big, very similar why I did the Twilight Covenant, just a really nice document outlining all the features of, every, of, of this ship. But there's one other feature I might want to throw in there too. 
which is important for say uh, individuals who have a link uh, like uh, input to them like Patrick and August is that the Rhapsody has full link integration so you can plug yourself to the interface of the ship. And not only could you, t say, take over piloting controls or sensory systems, but you have almost full awareness of the ship itself, of its databases, of all of its sensors. You, for lack of, like even its exterior sensors too, right? In fact, you could lose yourself and really kind of just close your eyes and kind of see what the ship sees which might be intriguing to those of you who are interested in such things. But without much fanfare, uh, with Killian Darkwater's um, small tour, he himself retreat, retreats to the Razor's Kiss. And you can see about 30 individuals uh, loading from, uh, coming from the Baron ship itself, the inside joke, loading themselves onto the Razor's Kiss. And he says to meet him in the Minor Innocence at such and such coordinates, which are only about, I'd say about 50, no wait, 300 miles away from your current position. That will be the rendezvous point before you guys reach Outcast Station. So, uh, is there anything you guys, is there any questions that you guys have in regards to the ship itself before I continue us on? Or maybe there's something you guys want to role play or something like that. Lay it on me. Hmm. If not, I can continue on. No pressure. Well, I always have to. I'm oh, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just to say, I can't think of anything for me okay, personally. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. Yeah, this is pretty much just like the walking into the ship and seeing what's there. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't particularly have much of anything to add for that. That's fine. You don't need to. Okay. Um, Where are we walking into? The cargo area first? Mm, yeah, actually, uh, it's hard to see on this picture itself. But uh, there are several entrances to... Uh, oh, my God. I just... Ah, I... Just a second. I zoomed into my browser instead of the mm -hmm. the actual roll twenty, so I was confused and sad. All right. <laughs> so kind of in this back area is the main entrance, right? And you have mm -hmm. two hallways. You can go straight to the cargo area, or you can go up and over to the living quarters. Okay. So uh, the tour starts, uh, he, the actual tour starts at the cargo area, then to the engines on either wing, the weapon systems, the main nuclear uh, reactors in which there are two, and the traction drives in the rear. These are more kind of um, engineer hatches. Not a lot mm -hmm. of spacious rooms getting to these, you know, nasty bits. And then, of course, the final uh, tour is of the the crew areas, and of course, then finally the cockpit itself. And unlike the Twilight Covenant, you actually have like a very clear view. Um, I guess you could say it's like a transparent metal that allows you to actually look out into space rather than it just being a view screen. That's cool. Yes. It's really handy if you had a power failure and then you be, wouldn't be flying blind like you would in the Twilight Covenant. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. curious if everything that we requested is on the ship and yes. you know if everybody's rooms were like tom's room and there's a little plaque no no my god no okay. <laughs> the baron the baron isn't like that this is a this is a I, I understand what you mean sorry that sounded really really dismissive but um no the baron is um he wants to make sure you're happy he's mm -hmm. he's accommodated you so everything that we've talked about over the week uh, has been requested. It is in your room or on the ship itself, right? But this isn't like um, a luxury hotel or anything like that. This is still very practical. So mm -hmm. um, your rooms themselves are probably outlined by, you know, you take a look in them and you see that's what you want, right? But there isn't any plaques, any welcome messages, you know, no mints on the pillow, nothing like that. <laughs> Uh, well, you're here to do a fucking job for him, right? So damn it, <laughs> yeah, no mint on the sorry. pillow. 
I am livid. Three stars. Well, three stars. <laughs> Take it up with the Baron. Three stars. Free fucking ship. Three on Yelp, stars. Yeah. <laughs> on Yelp. Yeah. On, on, on Outcast Yelp. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back again, guys. Mm-hmm. I think I'll, I'll use this time to uh, pee as well. I assume that's what he's doing. I, that's presumptuous of me. I, I apologize. I made him laugh until pee came out. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's, so... that's some bitch. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Okay, bye. <laughs> How is everyone doing today? Don't all speak at once. Someone speak at once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm okay. <laughs> so so we're we're in space of all things, freaking space, and we're already going to freaking Mars to pick up bugs, do some recon missions, and figure I'm... out a mystery. We get to figure out a mystery. I like mysteries. <laughs> mystery. Yeah. That's what we're going to be doing is figuring out, you know, how these bugs came to be and why this colony, which was thriving, just got stamped out. Well, Although, it was probably I, I the bugs. <laughs> How did the bugs come to be? I remember back on um, when we were trying to get the Twilight Covenant and there was that, that one guy that asked where I was from. Yes. I did not know that Mars. Uh-huh. Had been... yeah. yeah. I'm from yeah, Mars. Yeah, that's going to be awkward. <laughs> you, you were very lucky. You were very lucky he was a young kid born on Outcast Station and he didn't hear much about it. If you told yeah. that to a freebooter, he would have called you on your shit real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, Tom was lying. <laughs> sure was. But you're lucky you're lucky you were talking to Paragon there. That that was a yeah. that was a, a bonus. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Enough of this. Kriana Pants is not here. Just oh, then, then, I, then I won't continue. Mm. I'll just yeah. wait. I'll wait nice and patiently. What, you have a mixtape in for now? Mm-hmm. Um, they they were making fun of the... And all these floors. <laughs> My, the, the, the lag spike. Yeah. Making fun of the GM. No, you guys weren't. I guess the chat was. So there's no consequences for them that they know of. Minus 50 XP. <laughs> no, little did they know that Mrs. Mams could have come, but I forced I forced her to stay So on Earth. So they had to wow. do that. Oh, wow, you're mean. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, leaving Mrs. Choice. Mams there was entirely Patrick's decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually had no GM whisper like, hey, you know it would be really great with Mrs. Mams? You... You freaking riding her to space on the outside of the air airship. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that a reference to something? Or are you no. just crazy? Okay. I'm just crazy. Wait. Though it would be airship. great to just have Mrs. Mams outside on the ship and me riding her in the space. <laughs> I guess. Yes, I guess. I don't know. It's oxygen. I don't know if Mrs. <laughs> Nams could deal with the vacuum of space. But I guess we'll with never the power know. of magic. <laughs> it is slightly cold. magic is slightly cold in space. Slightly. Yes. Yeah. Slightly. Only slightly. Very slightly. Very slightly. Hey, fun fact also, according it. to chat, I mm-hmm. I have worse lag spikes than you, Inferno. Yes. Yep. I so do. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> not not recently, <laughs> not today. Know. But you you have had bad leg like, like spikes before. But that's fine. It's not your fault. You didn't create your internet. Damn time wearing a cable, being on an island. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. You're you've been fine now, though. I like to think that in Patrick's mind, he would be on top of a like, just a fantastical like Mrs. Mams that like. Just kind of flew into battle, and in reality, what he would be doing would just be like, kind of the fetal position on top of the slowly moving slug. <laughs> cool. 
What could have been? What could have been? What could have been? <laughs> la, 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 la. I, uh... <laughs> I did like your, your, um... Our little walk down memory lane with uh, Patrick's pictures, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm sure I missed a few. Uh... Okay. I, I seriously cannot remember. Uh, I, I think... There's so much that happened, yeah. it's okay. I found cake. Hi. So, Is it Normandy cake? Just... Was all this talk of ships made you hungry for cake? Yeah. yeah. Well, I went to the bathroom, but then, like, of then course... Then you made room for cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Gross. I have three different cakes downstairs, all of which what? are for me. What? One of them is was shaped like the Normandy, uh -huh. which I posted on Twitter. It's awesome. Another yeah. one was just a cake surrounded by cupcakes, which was Ooh. equally delicious. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. other one was a cookie cake. Oh my god! And then on top of the cookie cake was frosting, mm -hmm. and then on top of the frosting was another cookie cake. <laughs> what the hell? Why are you <laughs> telling me this? Now I want it double was cookie so cake. Good. <laughs> you know, I actually have a oh. cannoli cake. In my fridge, Canoli? I'll be back. I can <laughs> still hear you guys. So go okay, ahead. Go ahead. We're just gonna go have a party here. Apparently. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead then because oh, you bastards. Okay. <laughs> Don't make the DM hungry, or you guys are gonna come across against <laughs> hot dog monsters or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm gonna continue on here. Okay. I'm going to kind of go into a narrative space, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the first destination, uh, sure enough, you do reach Outcast Station. But luckily, both the Rhapsody and the Razor's Kiss has no need to actually dock with the station itself. In in instead, it actually stays within orbit, all right? Um, you do notice, interestingly enough, uh, the few ships that come and go to... Um, Two outcast stations seem to kind of slow down. You can kind of see that they're trying to run sensors on your ship. It's the equivalent of, you know, rubberneckers on the highway, right? If you kind of slow it down to like check out what you're what you're driving. Without the damn girl. Damn girl. Oh, well, you know me too well. Damn. Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> Without that. Uh, but anyways, the important thing is that the minor innocence, which is so large, in fact, that it doesn't, it's not able to find any actual dock. And instead, it, uh, a series, a, a labyrinthine, no, not a labyrinthine, a, a web-like series of grappling hooks jet out from its undercarriage and attach itself to the exterior of the outcast station and it clings itself to one of the asteroid the asteroid parts of that station itself and sure enough after about 30 minutes or so you can see on sensors for those of you who are interesting approximately 40 individuals all in vac suits is uh, leaving various areas of outcast station and converging upon the minor innocents and actually boarding it and soon after that uh, the crew has been picked up the minor innocents disengages his grappling hooks hooks returns to space and with a command from killian blackwater you guys set a trajectory and you begin uh hitting the void itself now I want to, at this point, I want to mention the kind of drives that you're using. The Baron mentioned that these were experimental drives, right? You know, you have um, different energy types, but this is a tractin. Traction. Wait, a tractin? Oh my God, just give me a second. I'm going right. to feel bad if I mispronounce what these damn things <laughs> what these damn things are. No, what the drive is called, because I'm going to have someone tell me I'm wrong. Okay. You know, because you have chemical drives and plasma drives. It's a traction drive. Oh. Okay, traction drive. So what that does, it generates a very powerful and specialized pseudo-magnetic field, and it attaches itself to the fabric of space-time and pulls the spacecraft along it, right? Think like you're lying on the floor and you pull yourself along by the fingertips well where the carpet is space time and you pulling yourself along is you the ship moving along right 
<laughs> so unlike all the other ones, this one uses a very, very um, specialized type of energy. And the really interesting thing about that is that it's only fueled by electricity. So the nuclear power that you have on board is more than enough to power the drives themselves. Now you do know the larger the drive and the larger the mass, the more power that's necessary. So say your small ship compared to the power needs of say the large ship like the Minor Innocence is probably you know different, but they use the same drives. And you do know, well, you would at least learn at this point that there are just a handful of ships that have this traction. Um, engine, right? This is not a common thing, right? We're talking about extremely, extremely rich people having maybe one and maybe a few of the top of the line, like just rolled out like a few years ago, military craft might have this. So the very fact that three ships have such a thing is significant. Okay. And it might also explain the newness and the uh, the quality of the ship that you're on, the Rhapsody. I'm going to speed things along now because space space travel mm -hmm. is um, can be exhilarating, but it also can be quite time consuming, right? And there's no need for us to. You know, role play day after day after day after day. But Patrick's after about a week, day pardon one. me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you could do that if you really wanted. But I like to have a little bit different pacing in my campaign, right? Besides, you guys have heard me talk a lot, and so I want to uh, start throwing things now more your way. Okay, mm -hmm. but I will say after I'll say the first week or so, um, people begin to. Um, fall into certain routines. Uh, I'm going to just quickly outline generally the generally attitudes and dispositions of the NPCs that are aboard your ship uh, before continuing on, if that's okay by you guys. Mm -hmm. yes, so, ma <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, Alicia herself, uh, she is obviously, uh, for the first few days, she is, she's a professional type of nervous uh, a person who who um, wants to make sure she you, she confesses to you guys that she's a little intimidated she says a little smaller ship like the Twilight Covenant wasn't that much of a problem it was very responsive but she feels like she's you know driving a motorcycle made of gold and if she crashes it or fucks up she's going to be in some serious trouble so she's the excited type of nervous where she's going to she's just trying to be very meticulous and try to do everything perfectly. She is almost in constant communication with the head ship, the Razor's Kiss. Actually so much where um, one of the other pilots of that ship has to actually tell her, like, you don't have to check in every 30 minutes. We're fine type of thing. But she kind of blows that off as nervous energy. But after the first few days, she finally starts to get used to such a thing. All right. August, our good friend August Keach, um, is not, for the first little while, actually a good chunk of this travel, he does bemoan the fact that he feels limited. He, uh, he has really, really enjoyed his time studying and involving himself in the link either both either at the outcast station or on freedom station the few times he's been there but eventually he realizes and he explains he probably confides to everyone but most particularly patrick that if there is any if data retrieval is necessary he feels that it is important for him to get as familiar with these new data devices as possible. So he spends much of his time, for lack of a better word, researching and experimenting uh, on a computer level. Okay. And in fact, on a few occasions, he remotely um, either disrupts or he temporarily hijacks 
um, say, entertainment devices that you might be using. So, for example, you might be watching a movie on, like, a big vid, vid screen, right, either in your room or in the recreation, and there'd be an interruption, and you'd just see, like, August's sweaty forehead, you know, like if someone is too close to the webcam. Oh. You, see, you just see his sweaty forehead for a little bit, and you kind of see his blue eye poking out. He goes, what? Oh, oh, okay, so that's what that does. And then eventually it turns off. There are a few interruptions like that. Um, but for the most part, he kind of stays out of everyone's hair. He is still mostly kind of in his own shell, although he is more vocal than he always used to be, right? Um, especially back on Earth. Bear is, well, what else can you say about good old Bear, right? Um, he is... Uh, uh, at first, he, he the first, I'd say, two weeks or so, he spends a lot of the time patrolling and learning everything he can about the ship, right? Like, he'll bring his big furry form in like the tiniest of crevices to get into the engine room. You feel that, and he actually mostly confesses to Mila or Nora uh, of this, but he feels that he needs to have full situal, situational awareness of the ship, and he's still not used to the confines of space travel. He's used to big wildernesses, vast landscapes in which to explore and hide. And so he's starting to feel a little claustrophobic. But other than a small remark here and there, his, he doesn't seem to visualize a lot of concerns. He's still very, very much in control in regards to that. And Blink is pretty much all business, at least for the first little while of your journey. She is insistent that whenever anyone has some free time for her to do uh, some form of uh, combat maneuvers or going over the data on these insects or um, going over tactical plans, perhaps even going over ways of communicating with each other, call signs, you might say, you know, tactical shorthand, anything to give uh, all of us, she says, all of us, uh, some sort of tactical advantage so we can work as a group. Because if what Killian says is true and these insects really work well together, we we can't run around like chickens with our head cut, cut, cut off, right? So she's very much all business in regards to this. Okay, so that's enough. Uh, so we're going to say uh, about a week, a week uh has passed at this point and before I, you know, continue on with the next scene, the next setting. But I want to throw it to you guys, if that's okay. Uh, if there's any little role play you want to do. You guys don't have to necessarily talk in character. You can talk about your characters a little bit, what you think they would do or what they'd be interested in doing, their attitudes, their dispositions, anything. What's Patrick up to? Day seven. <laughs> Patrick's loud. I've currently have almost fully understood whatever this scripture was. But it has hey, been Patrick. Yes, Mila. I'm talking like that. It's a, it's my uh, it's my narration voice for my uh, recording. Here, let me help. Mila will uh, pinch your nose. Day one. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today, Mila? I'm doing good. I'm just bored. I know what you mean, Mila. <laughs> I s think I could do like a good uh, Tyrathid pressure with this. <laughs> do, it, do, it, do it. 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 How are you today, Mila? I'm doing... And then Mila falls asleep. <laughs> that's, Day seven. That's, I guess. Mila is still Mila. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'll be the end of that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mila Good. Something, something that isn't just me talking. I'm, I like it. I like it. Mila will eventually wake up. Patrick's still there. She'll, she'll smile at him and then skip off. <laughs> 
Uh, actually, uh, let's see, which one would I, I probably would like, uh, calling. Uh, what's the, what's the, uh, 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 amount for that. You know what? It's I I don't need that because I probably gonna have weeks of recovery anyway. Um, so I like to have the calling of Hi Mila. <laughs> Just go on their head over and over again. Okay, okay, hold up. Uh, Krana, I like you to do me a save versus magic, please. Okay. So Wait. just roll one d twenty. Do all. Of my tabs here. Okay, what am I rolling? One d one d twenty. Yep. You fail incredibly. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Nice. Good. So uh, now I have curiosity. Do you have the psychic power mind block? No, I don't. Okay. So, okay. So for the uh, so you hear Patrick's voice in your in your head, mm -hmm. going, "Hey Mila, hey Mila, yeah, yeah. hey Mila, yeah, yeah." And it goes on like this for like unless you go to see Patrick or talk to Patrick or see Patrick out, that message of his voice will repeat for about five minutes or so. Mila will be sitting there going, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Don't put the space dick on my I am immortal. <laughs> I can't delete it. Oh wait, there we go. Okay. Please, no. Mila, for the entire five minutes or however long it is, we'll just be five sitting minutes. there being incredibly patient. Just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did. I guess to be specific, I did this while she was asleep. What did? That, what would that do? Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Mila kick her legs like she's running. <laughs> Day Roll seven. D100. <laughs> Roll me a D100, Mila. Okay. Uh, so far, Mila has uh, had an interesting reaction to this magic. Okay, you mm. kick all the sheets off your bed. <laughs> if you rolled, if you rolled high enough, I was gonna have you like that YouTube video of that dog dreaming and he gets up and runs <laughs> into the wall. I was gonna have that happen, but you succeeded. God on damn your... it, Inferno! I just had a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, but instead you just kick all the sheets off your off your bed. <laughs> Very nice. Day Very seven. Nice. I now know Mila <laughs> has dreams that her physical form actually responds to. Intriguing. Knowledgeable <laughs> stuff. What's Tom up to? Oh, what's Tom up to? Yeah, oh, bro. okay. Yeah, bro. What's he up to? Um, well, for most of the day, he will either make sure that Alicia is fine with piloting, and if she wants to take a break, he'll take over and all that. Sure, of course. Yeah, I think, uh, actually, for the sake of fairness, you, both you and her probably have um, some sort of schedule, so both of you can rest and pilot, you know, downtime for both of you. So Yeah. yeah. Yep. And most of his town time will actually be spent in either in his room... Uh -huh. Which, let me go over what I did with my room. Yeah, um, I mean, lay it on us, baby. I pretty much had a, a home theater set up in there. Big, huge-ass flat-screen TV, surround sound. Made it soundproof so that I can watch, what or Tom could watch whatever, whenever, and not disturb anybody. Hold um, Ha! Anyways. <laughs> um, he did have a, a minor movie collection. Um, taken from the Baron, which is which is fantastic. Um, he also requested an electric guitar, so he can actually have an electric guitar and play it, a and it'll connect up to the surround sound system, and again, not disturb anybody. So there you go. He's either rocking out in his room, or watching some movies, TV shows, something in his room, or um, he is going to over the four months ask if either Al. Or Blink would be interested in teaching him how to pilot his new Glitter Boy armor, which he had requested. Yes, which you have. Uh, can't speak for Al, but Blink definitely would. Well then, yeah, I guess Blink will be teaching him. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Inferno. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Okay. Doctor. 
Doctor. Doctor. Doctor. Doctor. Doctor. Okay. Uh, anything else, guys? I can uh, continue on with the next scene. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. No big rush. I guess uh, as a note, very similar to um, uh, Lee. No, not Lee. Mm -hmm. August. There we go. <laughs> yes. That's the name. Yeah, that's his name. Okay. Very similar to him. Uh, Patrick is basically going to be fairly shut away in his okay. in his room. Okay, what in particular are you shutting yourself away with? Um it's it's the uh, he's it he's in, you know got to know. <laughs> he is currently um he he has uh, a a cord connected to his camera and huh? he's currently sitting there like um muttering uh and like he's also looking like he's he's like trying to f like physically um kind of like just push away from him with his two hands and that he's not <laughs> that's all you can really tell what he's doing <laughs> sure 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 no problem thank you very much for the description also by the way as far as the spells and everything go both spells can be found in the the main riffs book mm. so feel free to 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 add them to your character sheet or put them wherever you want as you reference they're exactly as written okay do you need the names again no I actually got them thank you oh groovy groovy All right. Uh, shall shall I move on to the next scene, mm -hmm. next event, for lack of a better word? Sure. Okay. I would like. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Tom. Oh, Tommy. Tom. Tom. I would like you to roll me a d100, please. Eighty-one. Cool. One moment. Okay. Tom, we're about twelve days into uh, the journey so far since you've left Outcast Station. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're at the helm of the ship. Um, I'll let the other player characters determine where they want to be for the sake of this scene. But this one in particular mostly affects you since you will be piloting the ship at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Currently, you're, you're following uh, the current, um, for lack of a better word, uh, flight pattern of the ships themselves. So you have the Razor Kiss, Razor's Kiss, who is a good... Let's say 50 miles in front of you. You flank it slightly to the right of it, while the Minor Innocence flanks slightly to the left of it, right? In a very triangular pattern, right? Very similar to how the pictures are laid out, for lack of a better word, okay? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, without any warning, no mess, no, um, nothing on your, your sensors pick this up, and visually, it happens so fast in a blink of an eye. You were unable to um, you are not unable to react to it. Unfortunately, regardless of your superb piloting skill, but a huge impact hits the left wing of your ship, and a small explosion follows, rocking the ship slightly. Mm -hmm. Roll me a D100, please. 22! Thankfully, the armor has held on the Rhapsody, and there has been no breach towards the wing area of the ship. But it is clear what has happened the energy patterns that follow show that it is unlikely a meteor or any sort of space debris hit you. You would have seen it on the sensors. 
What is very likely is that a sh you were shot by something. It appears to be, now that you're able to do an analysis of the damage itself, the sensors on the Rhapsody are superior, right? So even the hull itself can give some sort of diagnostic as to what has hit it. It wasn't an energy beam. It was a physical force, probably some sort of rail shot or other sort of large projectile weapon. It was going s too fast to be any sort of missile or bomb. But it is clear it is some form of attack. Roll me sensory systems, please. And uh, any other character who has sensory systems who want to inject themselves into this scene, feel free to do the same thing and roll me a skill check. Asked by 17. Okay. Okay. Uh, Patrick would eventually get there, but it will take a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. Um, how much time you think? In a couple minutes? Uh, yeah. We give him like um, one to two minutes and he'll be there. Okay, well, so the, I would still like you to roll me a sensory check. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll throw that into effect when the time comes. Okay. Uh, I have the macro. I, I would also, if I have time or am able to, mm -hmm. um, report this to the Razor's Kiss and Minor Innocence. Okay. As soon as I actually figure out what it was. Okay, I'll, I'll resolve your sensory roll first. And then we can easily role play that. Um, you good? You good? Uh, hanging on the um, the the periphery there, uh, Karana Face. Yeah, she might make an appearance depending on. Okay. What happens? Feel free <laughs> to feel free to throw yourself into the scene whenever you like. Okay, dokie, to choke you. All right, great. So, uh, so Tom, you succeeded by seventeen, and Patrick. When you come on the scene, you will have succeeded by 19. Okay. Long-range sensors don't show any other ship other than the Razor's Kiss and the Minor Innocence. Who would you like to hail first, Tom? Razor's Kiss. Okay. Uh, you hear uh, the familiar voice of... Killian Blackwater say Rhapsody did we just have a sensor spike or were you just hit by something we were hit by something that didn't seem like any laser missile or anything that I've ever seen before all right uh, and uh, you hear a small click minor innocence Rhapsody slow down to uh, oh my goodness, I almost said warp 2, but there's no warp drives on this, to uh, mock. Slow down to mock 2. Take uh, our battle pattern. Take a battle pattern. Rhapsody, get in between myself and the Minor Innocence, okay? I want all of you to scan every single signal you, signal you can and look for energy signatures. Roger. And I will do that. Okay. Arm weapons. He says, mm -hmm. too. All right. Patrick, around this time, you would come in. And uh, I'm going to use your sensory check, uh, if it's okay by you, as an assistance for this request. Sure. Work for you? Mm -hmm. You run sensory signatures, and you only find find one thing that seems peculiar, Patrick. And that is a signature a good 120 miles away. But you could swear, it, it, it doesn't have the signature of a ship, right? It's not, um, you're familiar enough now with ion drives and plasma drives that it doesn't seem to be anything like that. What it seems to be is it seems to be more like a radioactive signature, that type of energy, right? Like, like something has absorbed a massive amount of solar energy and is just containing it and still emitting that sort of energy signature. It's not like any sort of ship or vehicle you've ever heard of or seen. 
Hmm. All right. Uh, Patrick will point that out. Okay. To just uh, Tom or to uh, to the other ships as well? I'll point that out to Tom. Okay. Um, question about its mobility. Sure. Um, Which, the Rhapsody's mobility? No. The thing that I, I Oh, scared. okay. All right. Roll me a... No, no. You already did your sensory check once. We don't need to do it over again. It doesn't seem to be moving at all. Seems to have no velocity. Uh, okay. Um, I would ask Tom if he can get visual on this location. Um, I will try. And well, you actually you you did tell tell Tom about that that um, possible thing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Un he did, yeah. He did. Unsure yeah. ship. Um, lots of solar radiation. And it's coming from that direction, and he's requesting a um, visual on it. Um, I would like to repeat that to the Razor's Kiss to follow procedure. All right, good find. Rhapsody. Yep, yep, we're seeing it right now. Seems strange, but we don't see any other pattern. I want you and the Minor Innocents to stay where you are, continuing on this heading, and he sends over some coordinates to you. We're going to check it out. It shouldn't take very long. It's within a close, a close enough range. We'll get visual within a few minutes. All right. Stay. Um, hold for an update. Mm -hmm. and, and then, unless you guys, yeah, sorry, keep going. I'll, I'll just um, not over the radio, but I'll kind of make a a remark to Patrick. I I just have to make sure that I'm following procedure. Yeah, I hope they don't act too rash. Yeah. It looks like, if I had to guess the situation, if I was in such a thing, uh, that shot might have been n nothing of offensive, but maybe the only way to actually contact somebody. You do have a good point. We'll see what they do, I guess. Yeah. I can move ahead, if you guys like, uh, unless you guys want to do anything else specific while you're waiting from an update from the Razor's Kiss. Uh, Mila is going to be oh. skipping into the... Uh, cockpit? The cockpit. Um, okay. She's humming, and she's like, what's going on? Um, Patrick will look up, and then like his head will suddenly like yank back. He has... Uh, the cord got a little bit taut in the back of his head. <laughs> and I'll go, hey, Mila, as he like, kind of waves his hand towards you, but obviously can't turn his head to you. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Hi, Tom. Hey. Um, we were okay. kind of, we were oh. rocked by a shot, um, and the Razor's Kiss is going to check it out. All right. I'm gonna go do something else. Bye. She I have, <laughs> have some music if you want to listen to that. What? Okay, I have some music if you want to listen to that. What kind of music? Oh, I got twelve different genres. Do you like? Um, it's kind of like yes. electronical. Then you, you, I uh, second drawer in in my room. Uh, just hook up at your headphones into that. You should be fine. Mila runs off. Um, unknown to you, she's running towards August's room thinking it's yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we can roleplay that if you want. Sure. She'll bust okay. open and start going through some drawers <laughs> if the door's unlocked. Uh, it will be because August wasn't expecting this. Uh, August is on his bed. He is, uh, he's kind of lounging with his personal um, computing device, his personal computer on his lap. He wasn't expecting anyone to come in, so he's only in a pair of boxer shorts and his skinny, scrawny body. Not that scrawny, but he's pretty skinny. Uh -huh. And he gives a, uh, a sudden, 
<laughs> Almost a feminine yelp <laughs> as you come into the room and he goes, Ah! Ah, what the hell? Privacy! Privacy! What the hell are you doing, Mila? Ah, oh, Gaius, what are you doing in Patrick's room? No, this is my room, you... Jeez, he says. What? How many times do... You have your own room now, Mila. You don't have to go barging into my own. Yes, God, I do have my own room. <sighs> what you doing? He he purses his lips, and he says in a snooty way, he says, You're not even going to apologize? What am I apologizing for? For bursting into my room without even letting me know. I could have been naked. I could be doing all sorts of things, he says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me try again. Mila will um, hop hop out the door, uh -huh. and then she will start knocking on it. Who is it? She opens the door and comes in. <laughs> and sits down on his bed. Ha! I'm Mila. August, despite how, despite there being a smile in my voice because I think this is funny, <laughs> August is not amused at all. And he kind of stares at you for a moment. And he says, You know, I'm starting to think you're a lot more trouble than you're worth. What? What? What do you mean? I mean, I don't know how to take all of this, frankly. If things didn't happen the way they did, I wouldn't be here right now, which mm -hmm. is kind of amazing on its own. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's moments like this, Mila, that I wish you never met me back in Greencastle. Oh. I have no idea how to get through to you. Would you appreciate if I barged into your room while you were sleeping? Yeah, I get really lonely. Roll me a d100. You don't say that to dudes. <laughs> Mila doesn't know any better. She has a five-year-old. What's your um? What's your charm? It's like sixty something. I, I, oh, okay. I'm not that charming. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Well, it's like sure, seven. Veil by seven, he goes, and his his face softens a little bit, but his words uh, are still in kind of his firm tone. And he says, yeah, well, maybe if you thought about what you did beforehand, people would like you more. Oh. So you don't, you don't like me? No, it's not that, he says, as he now starts, like, pulling blankets over his form. Because <laughs> it's clear that you're not leaving. Because, no, it's not that. It's just... A lot of people not like me? No, I, it's, I didn't mean to say it like that either. It's just, you really upset me when you just came in like that, okay? And I, I just don't understand me. how to talk to you to make you understand. Because this isn't the only time, like... I, I know that you're, you know, special. I know that you got, you know, mm -hmm. I know you're, you, you got those implants in your head, right? But yeah. I, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask to be special. <sighs> yeah, I know that, Mila. But I also didn't ask for you to just come into my room unannounced. Okay. Mila will... Solemnly hop off his bed and <laughs> oh walk, walk wait, out wait, the door. Wait. Don't, don't, don't leave the door yet. I have to get into August's mind frame. Of course. What would that little snooty bitch do? <laughs> wait. Uh, you hear from the room then, you hear uh, blankets moving a little bit. And uh, you hear him say... Okay, can you shut the door on your way out? Mila turns around after walking partially out the door, nods her head, and shuts the and door. And you see quiet. him back looking at his compu computer screen, but it's that look that, you know, people are, it's either, it's he's either embarrassed, he's either angry, or he just doesn't know what to say. But you know how people, when they can't just... They're either so uncomfortable, they can't look at someone in the eyes anymore, so they distract themselves by looking at something else. Mm -hmm. 
that's his look. Aww. And he's distracted by looking at the screen. So Aww. there you go. Uh, yes. So you you leave the room there. Um, would do you want do you want to do anything else while we're waiting for the razor kiss to call back, or do you want me to switch back to the guys? Um, and- Mila would just be walking down the hallway with her face sliding against the wall. <laughs> 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 like if you pass oh. by, you know when you when you put your hand on like glass and you just drag it yes. down. That's the sound that's making. <laughs> I kind of want. <laughs> I kind of okay, guys. Um, uh, Piff Burn, is it okay if I throw in another NPC action react? I mean, oh, that's completely fine with, me. with. Okay, good. Uh, it, it was, is it okay with you, Piff, and then we'll get right yeah, back to, absolutely. to you guys. Okay, good. I just didn't want to take too much of, of your spotlight. So, um, this is a pretty obvious gesture, um, and uh, sure enough, obviously the the ship, the shot hitting the ship would bother most people. I guess August didn't feel it in his room where perhaps he was distracted by something else. Blink is Blink and Alicia are already on their way, made their were making their way towards the cockpit while you were talking with August. But Bear, who was further back into the ship, only now crosses your path. And he can see clearly what you're doing. And so he approaches you and he, he gets up, you know, right beside you. <clears throat> and he says in his soft, firm, stoic voice, Nora, you will hurt yourself like that. That's okay. I'm really good at fixing myself up. She's still dragging her face against mm-hmm. the yeah. wall. <laughs> and Bear patiently follows you as you do so, and he doesn't make a gesture to stop you. He doesn't put his hands on you or anything like that, but he stays at your side. And he says, I have seen you do many things before, Mila. He corrects himself on the nameage. Uh, taking a, a good guess of which personality is in the <laughs> Donna right now. And he says, I have seen you do many things, but I have not seen you do this. This does not seem usual for you. Mm, There, I don't feel so good anymore. What is the matter? Are you ill? He says, and he actually stops and he gets in front of you. And his big towering form kind of lowers down a little bit so he can look at you a little bit more straight in the face. And you can see in his eyes and the way his mouth is shaped that he goes, his concern has deepened. Do you ever get that feeling that sometimes you just want to go away? You mean leave? Well, like, you don't really want to go away, but sometimes you get so tired you just want to just go away for a little bit when you don't really want to go away. He pauses for a moment. kind of looks drunk. (laughs) Yeah. He pauses for a moment and he says... I have never felt that way, but you feel that way now, yes? Yeah. I don't know if I should or shouldn't. And now, Bear rolls a skill check, and he says, If you were to go away, Mila, would Nora take your place while you were gone? Mm, maybe. There's something in the tone of your voice, or perhaps it's the experience that Bear has been with you so far. But to get a little bit into his mind, narratively speaking, he does recall uh, a certain period in... Uh, in his adventures with you. And he says a little bit more firmly, if not Nora, then somebody else. I don't know. I don't talk to anyone else. Probably. I don't know. Hey, bear. How you doing? Mila like jumps up and stares at him wide eyed. 
Uh, Bear does his best to to amuse you, but it's it's clear he can't wash the concern away from his face very clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, but he says, I am fine, Mila. I was about to go to the front of the ship and see what happened. Do you know what happened to the ship? I felt Someone it wrong. Someone the ship? Oh, no. Yes. We should figure out what's going on, Bear. Okay. Will you come with me, then? Yeah. She falls asleep. <laughs> okay. And, uh, we'll just leave your character to unconsciousness for now. And I'll let you know where you wake up, if that's okay by you. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> In the middle of space. Snake pit. <laughs> Why would Bear do, <laughs> Why would do either of those things? He pushes <laughs> the airlock. Well, she's broken. Fuck her. <laughs> there. Oh, Oh, we need. I need to find a less broken friend. <laughs> Don't look at Patrick. <laughs> yeah, so good mean. point. You might be next. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So going back to the cockpit. All right. So approximately five minutes have uh, passed, and the razors kiss. Uh, kiss. Uh, does radio both the Minor Innocents and your ship, the Rhapsody. And once again, it's Killian's voice saying, visual contact didn't come up with anything of interest. It seems to be just some sort of debris. Uh, old, looks like an old remnants of a ship that's just taken too much solar radiation. We're running, we're running one final check. Just to confirm, no one has seen any other signs, any sort of blips of energy, any signs of anything else within sensor range. Have you been under attack since then? Um, I don't Both think those answers right, Jim. No. Okay. Yes, um, no. Um, I know this is a lot to ask, Razor's Kiss, but one of our crewmates has a gut feeling. Could you possibly scan for life signs on that wreck? There is a bit of a pause. And he the... says... <clears throat> I, I was going to add a little bit. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, the, the crewmates thought was maybe that wasn't, wasn't a... Um, shot of attack, more of a shot of possible rescue. There's a pause. And Killian's voice says, we'll be using our entire suite of sensors to pick up anything <clears throat> within range. I suggest you do the same. We'll debrief when the Razor's Kiss returns to formation. Otherwise, continue with your last orders. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, about 10 minutes later, Razor's Kiss once again punches it into... Uh, not punches it. I'm watching too much stuff. Anyways, uh, returns to formation. And the first command, Killian says, All right, full power to your engines. We'll continue going Mach 10 from here on out. Mm -hmm. Pauses and he says... There, we continued to survey the craft. There were no life signs, nothing whatsoever. Very likely it was a stray shot from some battle someplace else. I guess you just got unlucky, Rhapsody. But for the next hour or two, I want everyone to keep their eyes peeled. Piracy isn't unheard of, and although they'd be pretty fucking stupid to take on what we have, you never really know. Roger. Patrick, roll me a advanced math check. Okay. Will you math us out of this problem, Patrick, like usual? <gasps> no, this will just assist in giving some insight uh, to the character. Oh. <clears throat> well, so, damn. so what you what the captain suggested, Captain Killian suggested, which is a stray shot that was fired from someplace else, does make at the very least, some logistical sense, Patrick. You run some calculations in your head, both trajector trajectories and probabilities. 
and the very fact that you know basic science and basic physics. And that is, if, say, for example, some were to just shoot, like, for example, you have a big rail gun on the front of your ship, right? If someone were to shoot that into a vacuum and it misses its target, there is no friction in space. That will continue to go at its maximum velocity until it hits something. Mm-hmm. Now, the odds of a, sh- of, of a stray shot hitting your ship is extremely low, but not statistically insignificant. 